Giants rookie minicamp is in the book. So in today's video, we're going to break down the biggest winners and losers coming out of the camp that took, uh, took place over the weekend. And look, nobody is a loser that has an invite to rookie minicamp. It's just the name of the segment. But there are some players that have seen their stock maybe go down after the three-day session. We'll break that down around the corner. But first, if you love the New York Giants, and you hate the Dallas Cowboys, and you want free, informative, entertaining updates every single day, subscribe to the channel. Tom Downey, host of the Cowboys Report, was upset that Giants now picked up more subs than the Cowboys Report in the month of April. He is now challenging us to a sub battle this week, and I wanted to destroy him again. Hit that sub button, and let's go Big Blue. You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports, and I am your host, Marshall Green, and we're talking rookie minicamp in today's video. The New York Giants had 75 players attend the camp over the weekend that took place from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Six rookie draft picks, all six players from the rookie draft class were present for the camp. They had eight UDFAs present, and five members of the 90-man roster were also there. The Giants held about 75-minute practices on Friday and Saturday, and Sunday was more of just a get-to-know-the-team type of thing for the New York Giants. We're talking winners first, losers around the corner. And the biggest winner coming out of rookie minicamp for Big Blue is the defensive tackle Elijah Chapman out of SMU. He was the only player that the Giants invited to rookie minicamp on a tryout basis that actually signed a contract with the New York Giants. So Chapman goes to camp, shows up with an invite, and he leaves by putting pen to paper and signing an NFL deal. Good for him. Chapman earned all ACC first team honors following his fifth season at SMU. Career stats of 148 tackles, 33 tackles for loss, 13 and a half sacks, one forced fumble, and five fumble recoveries. You look at what he did over the last four years. He spent five seasons uh, with SMU. I think he's actually tied or number one all time in games played as a pony. Uh, 60 game, 60 games played in college. He's an undersized defensive tackle. There's no, there's no getting around that. Uh, he was, I want to say he was five foot eleven. As I pull this up real quick, at his pro day he was measured at five foot eleven, two hundred seventy eight pounds. But he's got good feet. He's got good quickness for his size. He graded out in the 98th percentile for his 40-yard dash, 94th percentile for his 20-yard split, a vertical jump of 31 inches, and a broad jump in the 88th percentile. But it was the size that I think really was the driving factor as to why he did not get drafted because the production is there. It's just the fact that when you're that size, you're not going to be able to have that much Love from NFL draft scouts. As my guy Big Dash in the chat says, Chapman benches 500 pounds and said he can squat 730 pounds, and that's straight from the horse's mouth. Shout out to Big Dash and shout out to Chapman. A part of now the defensive tackle room that you see on screen: Dexter Lawrence, Raheem Nunez, Rochitz. Uh, I'm excited to see DJ Davidson in year three, Jordan Riley in year two, and I'm interested to also see what Jordan Phillips is going to do as he signed over. Uh, the offseason with the Giants after coming from the Buffalo Bills. My second biggest winner in rookie minicamp is Malik Neighbors. And honestly, it's not for what he did on the practice field. We know how special of a player he is. We know how dynamic of an athlete he is. And in the limited reps that he did have, you saw that. We saw a one-handed catch. We saw him jump up, three, uh, 360 catch. He looked really athletic. But it was the fact that he was upset or frustrated that – Wide receiver coach Mike Groh told him, we're probably not going to have you compete in every single drill. And that upset him because of the competitive spirit and competitive mindset that he has. Joe Shane and Brian Dable have alluded to it time and time again since making Neighbors the sixth overall pick. They said the, they love the dog that he has in him, and he just wants to compete. And the fact they didn't get to over the weekend kind of frustrated him a little bit, and I'll take that over someone who can't find shoes or cleats that fit. This is what Brian Dable said about neighbors, quote, he's athletic, he's quick, he's explosive, he has very good hands, he's got good answers, uh, awareness, excuse me, and he's got flexibility to play inside and outside, talking about the slot 
and outside the numbers. Now it's our job, and it's his job here to go ahead and start picking it up. There's a lot to learn. Certainly, we thought he was a really good player, obviously, where we took him. In the limited reps, you saw the explosion. This guy's start-stop ability is already probably the best on this football team, and I am excited to see what he is going to do on Sundays. And like I said on day one of the NFL draft, Malik Neighbors is going to change the offense's life overnight because you now have a wide receiver core that may be the fastest in the National Football League. You put him alongside Darius Slayton, Jalen Hyatt, and Wandale Robinson. You got four guys that can go. There also will probably be a camp competition over the summer between Isaiah Hodgins and new Giants wide receiver Allen Robinson to make this team. I've got Gunnar Olszewski making it because I think Joe Shane has learned that you need a punt returner or uh, Richie James might just fumble two punts as well as Eric Gray and Sterling Shepard. Big news for the Giants is there's not going to be a contract dispute or a holdout from neighbors. He signed his rookie deal, which is a slotted value. Not much of a negotiation takes, in, takes place for this four-year, $29.2 million deal, and he also has a fifth-year option that the Giants will make a decision on. Um, hopefully it all goes well, and he's going to get that fifth-year option picked up. Another rookie minicamp winner for me is the third-round pick out of Kentucky, Drew Phillips, the slot corner. Played outside at Kentucky, played in the slot as well, but it sounds like with the Giants, Phillips is going to be a slot corner. He even said he enjoys playing in the slot, and that's where he wants to work. We got quotes on that coming up in a second, but I thought it was interesting. One, before we get to this from Brian Dable, Joe Shane said immediately after the draft that Phillips is a slot corner in their system. And now Brian Dable at Rookie Minicamp is saying slot corner is a premium position for the New York Giants. And I think one thing, obviously you need the athletic ability, you need the skill set, and you need, you need just the talent to play in the slot. I think it's honestly harder to play in the slot than the boundary. Because when you're playing the boundary, you, can really, you really only can give leverage one way. When you're in the slot, you could get beat to your left, to your right, underneath, and over the top. And it's the IQ, and it's the football savvy that Andrew Phillips has that I think is going to separate himself and show that he could be an immediate difference maker and play above his weight class and at times probably won't look like a rookie. Jeremy Fowler said this. He had several scouts tell him that Andrew Phillips was one of the best interviews they conducted pre-draft. Very heady player. And I know that is something that Joe Shane and Brian Dable took note of. Phillips spoke to the media at minicamp, and he said this. There's so much going on at that spot when talking about slot corner. I like being in control a lot of times. You get to communicate more. You're involved in the run game as well as the pass game. A lot of times on certain downs and distances, you know that ball is coming to you. I'm just trying to make as many plays as possible. My way too early prediction here on May 13th is week one, the New York Giants slot corner is going to be Drew Phillips. I think that's going to happen. I do. I think your outside corners are going to be Cordell Flott and Deontay Banks with Drew Phillips in the slot and Nick McLeod being that super sub that could play anywhere in this defense now coached by Shane Bowen. My last mini camp winner, rookie mini camp winner for the Giants, is Theo Johnson, the athletic freak tight end out of Penn State. There was just something about when he took the podium and he spoke to the media, and maybe I'm biased by the Sports Center special that they played over the weekend. But Johnson might be tight end one for this team. More so because white, what might be happening to this roster with Darren Waller retiring. But I think he has the skills. I think he has the ability. And he's got the IQ to come in and make an immediate impact for this football team. If Waller's not here, the Giants don't have another tight end on this roster like Theo Johnson. I love Bellinger. But let's be honest. He's not graded out at the 99th percentile of all tight ends in scouting combine history when it comes to athletic ability. Theo Johnson, he is. And I loved this quote from him. He says, you know, you dream of playing for an NFL team, but actually having that NY on your helmet, it's a different feeling. It's really exciting for me because I think I have a super high ceiling. I think I haven't even scratched the surface of what I'm capable of. I'm really looking forward to proving every day that I'm out here. I think I have tremendous room to improve. I think I can grow a lot more than where I'm at right now. I think that's why I'm so excited. I'm coming in here with a learning mindset. 
I want to develop respect for my teammates and my coaches. I think that's going to help me to continue to grow and improve. But I'm super excited to get to work and get going here because I think I have potential to be a really special player here. And I love hearing that for a guy. And you know what? It's easy to take the podium at rookie minute camp and say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But you know what? I believe it when it comes to Theo Johnson. Because when he was drafted, you can go back and watch my video. I said I thought he was underutilized at Penn State. I also said I feel that way about a lot of players that come out of Penn State. I want to see him used more in the red zone. I want to see him more attacking the seam up the middle. And I don't even... I'm not opposed to seeing him play outside the numbers in a kind of a receiver type of position. He's an athletic player, athletic freak, to say the least. And if Darren Waller does retire, like a lot of people have told me they are expecting to happen, I could see Theo Johnson being the tight end one for this team, as well as Daniel Bellinger getting a lot of snaps. But you know what? In a year from now, we may be talking about the Giants have the biggest steal in the draft in Theo Johnson. We're talking winners. We're talking losers around the corner, though. Uh, and again, nobody is a loser, but you know what? It's the segment. And uh, I just got to find a way to see who didn't have the best weekend and maybe their stock, stock was affected the most. But I also got to tell you guys about our proud sponsor, Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use that promo code CLNS and Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. One of my favorite things about Prize Picks is all the ways that they try to make it easy for you to win money. And right now, they have slashed Caitlin Clark's point total for her WNBA debut that goes down this Tuesday by 99%. They have her stat projection at just half a point. Select the more on that, pair it with one more player, and you could turn $20 into $60. Play prize picks at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use that promo code CLNS. And the number one daily fantasy sports app will hook you up with 100% deposit bonus some losers and you know what he wasn't even at camp but I don't feel great about the future of Trey Hawkins with the New York Giants and I'm not saying he's going to be cut prior to the season but Brian Dable was asked about the cornerbacks over the weekend unprovoked he brought up Cordell Flott as the starting corner on the opposite side of the field from Deontay Banks he didn't mention Trey Hawkins he didn't mention Nick McLeod. He didn't even have to mention Cordell Flott, but he did. And I think with the addition of Andrew Phillips, with Deontay Banks and McLeod and Cordell Flott, I think Hawkins may be looking on the outside in when it comes to being in the rotation for that cornerback position. Let's just be honest. A lot of people, myself included, thought that Hawkins was going to have a big year. and That probably wasn't fair to him. He was a six-round pick coming out of Old Dominion. Had a great camp, a lot of hype there. I think the refs let him play a little bit more, and that, you know, benefited him. But he was also maybe the worst corner in the National Football League through the first two weeks of the season. And that is why he was benched after just two weeks. He was targeted 30 times last year, and he allowed 25 catches. This isn't a Trey Hawkins roast fest. It's just me judging the data for what it is. He didn't have a good year last year, and we already have our head coach mentioning somebody else besides him as the guy that he has a lot of confidence in that plays his position. So my question to you is this. Who is your starting CB2 for this team? We know Deontay Banks is going to be one of your starting corners. Who's going to be CB2? Hawkins, Flott, McLeod? Give me your guesses and predictions down in the comment section. Let's stay with the quarterback position. And another loser for me coming out of rookie minicamp is Aaron Robinson. I have been asked maybe 555 times, Marshall, what is going on with Aaron Robinson? And you know what? Brian Dable was finally asked about it. And he finally gave an answer. And he said, Robinson is still in the rehab group. Smart, tough, dependable. Robinson has played two games in the last two years. He didn't play at all last year. From now going forward, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, I am not considering Aaron Robinson in the future plans of the New York Giants at the corner position, which stinks because Robinson was actually good his rookie year and he used a third round pick on him and he showed some versatility of playing on the boundary and playing in the slot and being a physical corner and getting downhill and not being afraid to make a play in the run game. But if you're not healthy and you're not available, it doesn't matter. Two games played in the last two years. 
And those both came in 2022. And uh, Brian Dable says he is still with the rehab group. I hope he gets healthy, and I hope he can produce and make this roster, but I don't see how that's going to happen. My last loser coming out of mini camp is rookie mini camp is Lawrence Cager. Uh, one of the last tight ends on this roster spent last year with the Giants being called up from the active roster as well as the practice squad. But Theo Johnson uh, makes Lawrence Cager a cut candidate because the only reason that you kept uh, Lawrence Cager on the roster last year is because outside of Darren Waller or when Darren Waller got hurt, you didn't have another receiving tight end. But now you have a tight end room filled with blockers with Chris Manhurts and Jack Stoll. So I think Theo Johnson and Bellinger, your tight end one and two, and Chris Manhurts and Jack Stoll, who's not pictured for some reason on this graphic, uh, are not are, are on this roster, and those are going to be a run-blocking tight ends. I don't think the Giants keep more than four tight ends. I don't think Darren Waller is one of those guys. So I'm going to go with the tight ends that make this roster are Daniel Bellinger, Theo Johnson, Chris Manhurts, and Jack Stoll, which means Lawrence Cager is probably on the outside looking in when it comes to this 53-man roster. Quick recap here. I've got Elijah Chapman as a winner. He got a contract. He's probably the biggest winner of them all. Malik Neighbors a winner. As we saw, got a little bit of a glimpse and a tease of what he could do on a football field. Andrew Phillips looks like he's already got a step or an opportunity to be that starting slot corner his rookie year. I think Theo Johnson might be the biggest steal of the draft. He showed some of that athleticism. While also speaking, he showed that he is someone that's got a really good head on his shoulders. Some losers. Trey Hawkins, I think he's not someone that's going to be in contention for that CB2 position. Aaron Robinson is still working through injuries. And Lawrence Cager, I don't think he's going to make this roster. So for that reason, I have him as a rookie mini camp loser. I'll tell you this much. I'm ready for the season to start, man. I'm ready for week one. And I'm hoping it's against the Washington Commanders so we could start 1-0. and And let's go. If you're ready for the season, hit that thumbs up icon. And let's go Big Blue.